Hello everybody, happy today. I'm filming this in the midst of moving. Um, we move officially on the 29th and today is the 27th day after Boxing Day. I just find Boxing Day to be so much fun. I have no idea what it's actually supposed to be about. I have kimchi stuck in my teeth one sec. I fully intended to film a what I got for the holidays video, um, but I was I was watching other people's and I really do enjoy watching other people's. I find them to be a lot of fun and I like to see people happy about the gifts they receive and things, but I couldn't see myself making one for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I just, it just didn't feel right. Um, and I think that for me is just a product of what this year has been. Um, it just felt, odd for me personally to talk about presents. I don't know why. Maybe I'm the Grinch. Maybe it's not COVID. Maybe it's me. But instead of that today, I thought we could talk about what I read this year um, and just my experience with getting back into reading. I'll preface by saying that my singular goal for the year of 2020, pre-pandemic and everything, um, was to get back into reading. When I was younger, I'm talking elementary school age, I loved to read. I read voraciously. I didn't quite get in trouble for reading in class. That was more my friend Emily. Um, but I was definitely a bit of a bookworm and I loved it. Those are the days, you know, of Percy Jackson and the selection series even and YA and middle grade, things like that. I just found reading to be a wonderful escape and I loved nothing more than just to go to Barnes and Noble, not necessarily to buy anything, but just to be there and be surrounded by the sheer magic that is the written word. And then middle school, came along and I definitely read in middle school. I read, you know, Divergent, Hunger Games, that brand of dystopian YA, um, but my reading definitely fell off of it. I don't believe I read anything in seventh or eighth grade apart from maybe what I was assigned for school. I did read Animal Farm then, that was a good time. And then freshman year came along and I read nothing, which I think is actually kind of funny because I was a creative writing major at my high school freshman year uh, and I, I I didn't really read. I binge watched Doctor Who instead. When 2020 began, I was going into the um, second semester of my sophomore year of high school, and my first semester had been really atrocious socially. I had a really difficult time making friends. I was super lonely. Um, my dad would come pick me up every day for lunch because I had no one to sit with. Um, but second semester, things started to turn around because I got really involved in theater at my school, which helped with the friendship issue. And so I decided that it was an okay year to start actually pushing myself and creating new challenges because I had been struggling with my mental health pretty severely since about the sixth grade. And the end of 2019 slash the beginning of 2020 is when I began to get help, which I would totally recommend. It's life-changing to say the least. And so I decided I wanted to have a goal. I wanted to have an objective for the year, one tangible thing I could point to and say, yeah, I did that and I'm proud of it. And I decided that that one goal would be to read more. And I set an arbitrary number just, you know, to kind of inspire myself and keep myself motivated to read, which was six books. And um, by today, which is again, December 27th, I have read, I thought it was 120, but Goodreads says it's 121. So one of the two, which is crazy because that's double my initial goal. And I thought my initial goal would be hard to get to. The pandemic has definitely helped with this to some extent. I've had more time at home to read. I've had more solitary time, more time in isolation as I think most people have. Um, and that's definitely helped me rekindle my love for books. And I thought about how I wanted to do this video. Um, I was either going to do what I did for summer uh, 2020, where I sat down and gave like a 30 second review for all of the 73 books I read over summer vacation. Um, I thought about doing that for 121 books and it just seemed so daunting and mildly miserable. Like I could tell it would not be a fun experience. So I thought instead I would sit down and we could talk about maybe what I've learned from these books and uh, just the importance of reading, whether for pleasure or for um, the acquiring of knowledge or both. As I mentioned, I read 120, 121 plus books in 2020, as I still have a couple days left and I'm reading, take a hint, Danny Brown, and it is funny and I know I'm gonna finish it. Also, Aristotle and Dante, something with the new universe, discover the secrets of the universe, really good book. I began the year reading one book a week and one of the very first books I read was um, To All the Boys I've Loved Before by uh, Jenny Han. 
because I loved the first movie adaptation, the second one in it. But um, I really did enjoy that first movie, and so I picked up the book, and it was a lovely time. And that's how my reading year began. Just kind of fluffy, cozy. I read books that I'd wanted to read for a while, books I knew would make me happy, you know, just fun books. My friend Austin helped a lot with this. He, t he reads quite a bit as well um, and recommended and lent me a couple of books. So then I began to read They Both Die in the End by Adam Silvera as well as uh, This Is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel. And this was not the first time I read LGBTQ plus fiction, uh, but it was definitely my official introduction into that world. I'd read Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, books like that, but um, this was the first time that I sat down and began to actively seek out diverse texts in my, in my reading world, my reading life. Then the pandemic hit, and so I read books I already had or books from Libby. I'm a big library person. Consumerism is definitely a big issue uh, in general in society, but it's prevalent a lot in booktube, and I find it fascinating. And for me, it's kind of multiple, you know, it's layered, like a yogurt parfait, like an onion, like Shrek. Because on one hand, I want to support authors and publishers, uh, specifically publishers who are really aiming to diver diversify the novels that they're putting out in marketing. Um, so I want to support them monetarily. I also don't have much money um, because I do not have an income. I'm in high school right now and I'm, I do not have to work, which is a big privilege. Um, and so I don't have a ton of funds to buy books. I feel quite guilty buying new books because one, they're really expensive compared to used books and they're also not good for the environment. So I tend to buy secondhand quite a bit. It's just very complicated and maybe we'll get into that in another video. Summer 2020 was um, interesting for a variety of ways. And I think it'll be a summer, a time in history that will probably have a name in textbooks in the future. I can very vividly see kids in AP US history sitting down to learn about the summer of 2020 and it having like a distinctive name. Like, you know how the Harlem Renaissance has a name? I feel like 2020, it's particularly the summertime, we'll have something like that. Uh, but yeah, summer sucks. <laughs> COVID obviously continued to rage through the United States um, and the world. The US has an incompetent blob of a figurehead in the government and that continued to deny it was a real problem, uh, advocated like drinking bleach or something. There was also the racial awakening, I guess you could call it, of summer 2020 um, with the just constant barrage of murders and slaughters of black and African-American citizens, particularly in the United States. But again, this is a worldwide phenomena. phenomenon. AP human geography teacher Mr. Fox would be deeply disappointed in me. And it was a really terrible time for the Black and African American community, for the United States at large. Um, for me personally, it was a time for me to reflect on my own inherent biases and where I've fallen short in the past and to really think about actionable, I don't know if that's a word, but ways that I want to move forward in the future in terms of um, not only my reading, because I believe diverse reading is crucial, but also just in my personal life and in the way I pursue education, things like that. I know that the term listening and learning is quite overused, but I think that at the end of the day, um, that is what summer 2020 was for me. And it's a time in my life that I don't want to leave behind. Um, I want to continue to actively, especially on booktube and on the platforms I have, seek out black literature and just diverse literature in general. I talked briefly in the beginning about LGBTQ plus novels, particularly in YA, but really in any genre. Um, I wanna diversify my reading in terms of that. I wanna diversify my reading in terms of ability, uh, race, gender, um, religion, everything. Because ultimately it's a disservice not only to you, the viewer, but also it's a disservice to me as a reader and just as a human being with the capacity for empathy. It's a disservice to me to read the same story over and over. Creatively, it's a disservice because it gets boring. In terms of developing just a global view and an idea of worldwide citizenship, it's a disservice because uh, I'm keeping myself from learning about different cultures, you know? It's just 
it just seems natural to me that diverse readings should be something we all aim for. And no matter what type of media you love, I think that it should be something we aim for, whether that be music or film or television or um, painting, you know, anything. The way this impacted my reading was I definitely began to read a lot more uh, black nonfiction and fiction, but I did find myself reading consistently struggle stories. There's nothing inherently wrong with struggle stories, but I do believe it's wrong to only show communities in their worst, um, to only explore traumas and pain and open wounds, because there is beauty in communities as well. Um, there's joy, there's music, there's life, there's vibrancy, there's love, and I think that's just as, if not more, so important to read. Something I would like to touch on is just the number of books and competitive reading. So if you do follow me on Goodreads or um, if you've watched previous videos, my reading goal, although I mentioned earlier that in my mind it was 60, on Goodreads I put it as one uh, because I don't want to judge my reading or the quality of my reading numerically. I'm much more interested in what I reap from a book emotionally, um, what a book teaches me, how I'm changed by a book, than the number of books I read. And I definitely got caught up in all the quantitative stuff for a while there. Um, I'm super interested in statistics, and so the fact that, like, Goodreads provides that for you, it's like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And then I decided that, like, for 2021, I'm gonna do my own stats chart, because it's fun, and it is, but it's also not important to my personal reading. What is important to me is that I track the diversity in my books. What is important to me is seeking out stories that I can connect to and stories I can't connect to in equal measure. Um, what's important to me is the quality of reading. So I don't regret the number of books I read this year at all. Um, I do regret the importance I placed on that number in my own mind. And again, totally cool to celebrate numbers. I think numbers can be fun, but um, they just turned into something not so fun for me. And now winter is here, and I have been feeling very funny. And by funny, I mean um, I suffer from clinical depression that gets really, really increasingly worse as the weather gets colder, and as the sky gets darker, and as the days get shorter. Um, so that's something I always have to reckon with every year because I love fall and winter. I think they're um, super lovely and I think that the aesthetics of those times of the year are really beautiful, but also they're not, they don't love me as much as I love them. And so this time of the year has been a lot about increased reflection for me, not only in terms of um, the world and social justice and what I'm reading, but also in terms of my experience on YouTube. I'm, I'm very conflicted about the fact that I'm on this, this platform because on one hand, um, I feel that I'm doing net good here, um, that I only say things I believe in, and that I'm hopefully promoting empathy and kindness, and that I'm growing through the comment section, through talking to you guys, um, not only as a reader, but also as just a person. And there's definitely good here, and I hope that I'm a part of that good. At the same time, uh, I feel very deeply uncomfortable that I'm on the internet. I feel very uncomfortable that my thoughts are there for anybody. I feel conflicted because I do believe what I'm doing on here is art, but it's also a part of just like this giant machine and a corporation that doesn't care about me or my ideas, but about making money. Um, and I guess that's the world and that's okay because we all operate in that space, but it's just icky. It's just icky. And I've been thinking about what I want to be and I want to be a filmmaker. That is the dream, but I don't want to be a part of that culture. I don't want to be a part of the uh, homogeny and, um, just the conformity and the darker, ickier sides of Hollywood or just the entertainment industry in general, but I don't know how to pursue what I want to do without, you know, at least engaging in that culture to some extent. This happens to me every winter. <laughs> it's my annual existential crisis. Um, and I try to be, I try to just let myself feel what I'm feeling and think what I think and maybe write it down to some extent um, because it's okay to be confused. I think that's the majority of life. Life is just trying to figure stuff out and failing to figure stuff out and learning things you didn't expect to learn along the way, which is really neat. And then of course, I'm also starting to think about college and 
um, how to how to really get into the places I want to go. I've been thinking a lot about material items. Uh, this is another thing I do annually. I do not own very many things. I do have a decent collection of books, but um, that aside, like we're, we're moving right now, I have a total of five boxes and I don't think that's good or bad. It's just who I am and I feel very um, uncomfortable buying things when I know I could, like, even books, like, I know I can get them from the library, and so I will, instead of buying them. And I think minimalism's super cool, but at the same time, I know that it's, like, the most privileged possible phenomenon, because, like, who has the problem of having too much stuff? I guess what you could call this is growing up, and I don't like it, but I also know it's super important, and I'm okay, I think, with the fact that it's happening, um, I'm okay that I'm turning 18 <laughs> this coming year. It's just bizarre. I was literally just 14. Like, I, I swear. But the way that this all combines, I suppose, to YouTube and to books and to just my experience of 2020 is I just feel like things are moving very quickly. And that includes the way I'm reading. And that's okay. It's different and it's not, it's not what I was last year. I'm not at all who I was last year, which I think is good. Um, overall and I'm incredibly grateful for what I do have and that's what I try to ground myself with um, during times like these seasons like these um, more contemplative time contemplative contemplative or contemplative but you know just times like this so yeah I'm gonna end this video by talking about my Goodreads stats um, and then just little wrap-up conclusion so if you're interested in that stick around if not thank you for watching but here are the statistics so one of the stats goodreads tracks is the most popular book you read this year and i'm not going to be sharing that because it's an author um, i do not want to support or mention on this channel i'm sure you can guess who okay now goodreads says 120 so i read 120 books this year and i read 37,134 pages the shortest book i read was called something happened in our town it's a children's book about police brutality and racism and i think it's really important and i think it's a book children and parents should read together and have further discussions off of and that was 40 pages i think i already said that the longest book i read was a clash of kings by george r r martin and that was 913 pages that was an audiobook though <laughs> yeah like 48 hour audiobook good times the the average book length that I read in 2020 was 309 pages, which is fine. The most popular one, so I'm not going to talk about. Least popular one um, was called Emerging Voices. Apparently only five other people on Goodreads have shelved it. Um, my English teacher from last year gave this to me to read, and it's, it's really just like a collection of essays and stories um, that are really diverse and rich about America in American life and its complexities and its intersectionalities. It's it was really good. I enjoyed it. My average rating for 2020 is 3.9 stars, which I'm pretty happy with. That's pretty good. Uh, and then my first review of the year was for the traveling restaurant, Jasper's Voyage in Three Parts by Barbara Else. Um, this is a middle grade my mom bought me. It was cute. Three stars. Nothing. Nothing amazing, but I think if I'd read it when I was younger, I would have loved it. And then my last review, it says my last review is Listen to Your Heart by Casey West, but I know this isn't true because I just reviewed Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson and I just reviewed Hercule Poirot's Christmas by Agatha Christie. So yeah, those are my stats and I think next year I'll track some individually in terms of diversity just to keep myself accountable for what I'm reading. But yeah, that was that was this year in books and seasons and ramblings. And that sound you may or may not be hearing is packing tape. Um, this is my second to last night sleeping in this house. I've lived here since I was five. Um, so it's weird, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited for the next chapter. The next house won't be my home. I'll only be there for a year, but um, It'll be somewhere I can make some more memories with my family and friends um, when COVID's over. Uh, it won't be over when COVID's contained, controllable. Please get vaccinated, guys, please. That is my my 2020. Um, ups and downs, lots of them, like everybody else. And thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a mildly coherent video. I feel like it wasn't, but... um. Who's the judge of that? I do not know. You or the YouTube algorithm, one of the two or both. With that, I will say thank you. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and yeah.